<clears throat> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Jason Unleashed. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. Jason Carter here, outside again. And um, if you can hear, they're doing like construction, building a, a, um, a condominium. I don't know what's going on, but I like the outside feel. So I'm giving it to you guys again today. Awesome show. Have my boy, pit crew brother. Awesome, cool guy. Bryce. Bryce. It's early. See, I normally do my show at one, but it's early. But Bryce Eilenberg of the RuPaul's Drag Race pit crew, my pit crew brother, is here. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> He's going to be here in just a few. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a great show. You guys know the drill. Questions for Bryce. Slide slide them in into the, the questions box below. And uh, Gabby, hi. Okay, you don't hear, you guys don't hear the construction. I love it. I love it. Great, great. So, you know, sound quality matters. Thank you, Luca. Lighting's on point. I had to work it out today. But nonetheless, let's bring in Bryce. He just chimed in. Boom, go live with Bryce, go live with Bryce, Bryce going live with Bryce. Hold on, let me find him. Bam. Bam. Bryce, Bryce. I'm still waiting for, hey, hey, Janae, I'm still waiting for um, a connection song. I'm, I've given up hope. I'm just going to start, like, I don't know, singing, like, arias or soliloquies for it. Fine. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Bryce Island Burke. Hey, Bryce. Hey. <laughs> I was, did we did it. I was trying to sing you, like, a connection song because I, it, the lag between people coming on the show was, like, eternal, but it didn't happen today, so, you know, it's all no, good. Man, keep, keep on going. Keep on singing. Bryce, <laughs> yeah. Red Hot 100. I tried it. Hey, I tried beautiful. it. That's beautiful. my new, uh, new theme song. Bryce, Hi. Yeah, Red Hot 100. Perfect. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing well. I am enjoying this lovely day outside through the <laughs> light. You can see the light from my face. That's I'm outside gonna... window. And you Bryce. are actually outside. I was going to say you're enjoying the lovely day outside inside. Good one. Yeah. Good one. No, that's, that's the beauty of windows. You see the outside and you enjoy it. Yeah. But I can good. stay inside, protected from the, uh, the, from the elements. Yes. Well, good to see you. Always good to have you on the show. Um, how have you been, man? Quarantine, COVID nineteen, everything that's been going on. Like, I mean, dude, your life. Tell me about it. Haven't what, seen you in a bit. What a year. Whew. I've been uh doing my best to stay focused on what I can control. You know, I got work still going on. Um. But then, yeah, being cooped up in a house, you know, you're not going outside as much. I've been like rearranging my room all the time my bed's on a different side i got new sheets i got like new decorations i like rearranged all my cabinets like i've just been you know focus 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 trying to go ah <laughs> we're inside all the time i've never known you to be like like a homebody i mean you are a cancer so i, I never real i never knew that you were very like that homie you had said not you rearrange your cabinets only people say yeah i rearranged my room i painted but it's like no i made sure all the borelli pasta was in line in alignment <laughs> in order that's right. That's what I did. I like rearranged like, put all my spice. Like, I had this big spice rack thing that I moved them all out and organized and sorted. And like, I did my fridge. And I've just been like doing like little home projects because when you're in the same spot for so long, you need some a little bit of change if you can't get that from you know traveling or or going places. So I don't. Someone I just said this. Doing. is Bryce, Someone just said this is the most clothes they've ever seen us in. Yeah. You, hey, I I don't have sleeves on right now, but like. You know, you got sleeves. That's pretty good. No, I mean, not really. I mean, I, I have cleavage out. I got, like, a little a little cleavage going on here. But, you know, it's, we're outside. It's hot. So, anyways, okay, so you've been, you've been rearranging your 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 house. Well, look, I'm, I miss you, man. It's good to see you. I know we haven't been able to, to kick it because of, of COVID. But yeah. this season of this season of All-Stars, of course you're watching, right? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm trying to remember when I was there, when I wasn't, all that sort of thing, yeah. Same. It's so good. It's so good. Like, I mean, look, we work on the show, of course, and yeah. and we get to see the behind the scenes. But it's, there's always something, I, I guess, magical about watching it on TV and then seeing the drama play out. I had no idea, B. It was this dramatic. They don't ever let us in on the secrets on on yeah. on set. They're always, you know, tame and cool. It's like, all right, guys, here's the rules. This is what we're gonna do. You walk in, you walk out, stand there. There's your spot. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> all right okay you can go wait no 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 don't move don't move okay now you can go so that's our experience right it's very yeah. like you know but like robotic like you're here you're there everything's scheduled and then when you see it all unfold right <laughs> Yeah. Well, I always laugh because after they're done, after they're done filming and the cameras roll away, they just leave us there. Like no one yeah. dismisses us. No one says, "Okay, pit crew, you're done." It's just like 
that's figure it out like fend for yourselves yeah and like we were asking like hey you know do you need us do you need us i mean we're more than happy to stay we, we love being on the show anything you need us for we're there but yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty funny because obviously the focus of the show is the queens and Rue right. and, and all that drama we're, we're just there to be you know in the background looking cool and pretty and you know sometimes we go on for like the, the acting challenges and stuff like that which is some of my favorite times where you get to ad lib and like try to pretend like we're acting like yeah look at us use us and then you know well, I, I, we, we definitely need an Emmy. I feel like all the lines we've had and all the seasons, I mean, you came on in season seven, right? All the lines we've had, we need an Emmy. At least, at least, at least like, a, a, like a, or, a, or a Webby or a Streamy for OPIC Crew, because that's some good content. Yeah. That's quality content. Yeah, actually, um, do I have it with me? Um, shoot, no, I think I put it away. I was a, uh, my Judy. <laughs> Best Judy. Remember one of one Best Judy? Yeah. Well, the, uh, so the Wowies, we the Wowies right. So yeah. real, real talk, that can of soup that we got. So for those watching, a Wowie is pretty much a can of soup that World of Wonder gives from at their annual award show. We ate the soup, Bryce. We much can ate the soup. You ate it? Oh, we my had, God. I mean, <laughs> hey, far be it for me to let mushroom soup go to waste. I, I don't got a lot of awards, so I, I kept I kept it as my award. Although I don't have it out and about right now for me um, to wow myself. But that was part of my room rearranging, resorting stuff. I got rid of a whole bookshelf that had the Wowie Award on it, and now it's in storage somewhere. I don't know. New beginnings, new beginnings. Bryce, let's talk about your beginning on Drag Race, though, because a lot of people. I mean, we. I mean, we've done interviews and we've kind of we've we've hit it on it in, in other in other outlets. But mm -hmm. tell tell people how you got on the show because everyone had like every pick crew member has a unique story of how they came to sashay into the workroom. Yeah, mine was very. I, I wasn't searching out to be on any particular show in general. So it was like about five six years ago now. Uh, I you know I. Was, most people know if you don't i'm an aerospace engineer i work on flying jets and stuff so that's my main job but i wanted to mix it up you know as we often do life is full of variety and fun so i wanted to add some of that into my life so i tried to be a model of sorts i was like eh, you know i'm you know that sounds like something fun to do if i can why not so i made a an account on modelmayhem.com which i no longer have because i don't really use it um and I recreated an underwear model shoot that David Beckham did for Armani. And then I posted it up, you know, people saw it. And it just so happened that that very year, they were looking to add a redhead on RuPaul's Drag Race. The universe. Me, red hair. Oh my gosh, I got it. I mean, there's a couple grays popping in now, but shh, no one can see those. Um, and yeah, they saw it. They're like, oh, we need one. So they sent me an email. Like, Do you want to be on this, uh, this, this, popular tv show they didn't tell me what it was and they're like oh yeah sure a popular tv show that sounds fantastic because i have not been on a popular tv show before so i got an email um i found out the name of the show and uh, that was actually my first time knowing about you know i knew who rupaul was but i, I wasn't aware of like his old drag show um, shame on you <laughs> yeah shame on me right but now i know better now i know the glory that is rupaul's drag race season one through 12 and all stars one through five and all the other rag you and all that stuff um so i i saw the show it looked very fun so i decided i said yes but eventually the dress in season 10 apparently <laughs> and uh yeah then i hopped on the show and then i met you and now we have a great friendship it was wonderful. It, it was like the universe had their hand. Also, um, our producer just from the show just called me on accident, I think, so I had to pause it. Uh, so, okay, this is so cool because now here you are, uh, what, seven seasons later? I mean, well, more than that, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then like three of All-Stars, all these seasons mm -hmm. later, you're here, you're this mainstay, you have fans all around the world who love you. I mean, your Instagram is blown up. People really get into Bryce Eilenberg. You've, you've appeared um, as uh, on, on some really cool things like Attitude Magazine, NC Magazine, Red Hot 100, and people have really mm -hmm. taken to you as being part of an LGBTQ plus show. With that, you are also an amazing ally to the LGBTQ plus community. What are the conversations that people are having with you about being an ally? I'm sure now more than ever, people have slid into the DMs, have asked you questions. What are those, some, what are those, some of those conversations like? Well, for, for me, my, my main thing is, um, 
I, I want to, you know, be being friends with you, being friends with anyone from the community. I want, I don't want it to be like, oh my gosh, you're friends with someone different. Let's make that a big deal. So mm-hmm. for me, like, I know there's a lot of good, good platforms that, you know, express like how to be an ally and how to actively participate. But I also want to show that, you know, we're just friends. Like that's it. Yeah. Like because you're gay and because I'm straight that to me, I don't want that to be like an issue that needs to be like, brought up it should just mm-hmm. be part of normal life so right. I, I know that there's different levels of being an ally um in terms of how vocal you are but i want to show that like it's you're you're a, a great human and i feel like being friends with you is you know great to experience like more of like expanding my circle in terms yeah. of what i'm exposed to because sure. we we've been together and i, I feel like being with you on all the great events that we've done, like, um, you know, hosting Pride in Indianapolis, and going to so many events throughout the world. Like, we've had great experiences together and met so many people that, like, I want that just to be life. Right. Like, that's a part of life. So that's that's how I, I like to see my interaction with people. And, um, yeah, I get lots of, you know, great comments like, hey, thanks for, you know, supporting and being around. And it's yeah. tough to know exactly what to say, but I think just being – you know, friends with you and friends with everyone that we meet um, and having that just be life and, and normalize. Yeah. And 100%. That's how I like to see it in my mind. Yeah. I mean, no, and I, and I, I completely see that and hit on that. I think that's one of the wonderful things that we, that's why we love you so much. That's why you're such a good friends because like, you know, when you came on the show, people were like, Oh my gosh, Rue was bringing a cisgender person, a straight person. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, well, drag race is also founded in acceptance of everyone, not just the yeah. LGBTQ plus community and everyone that's come to be a part of the show has has been just family. It's, it hasn't been an issue yeah. of, well, 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 Bryce is straight. It's like, no, Bryce is Bryce. Bryce is like our brother. Like, it's just, it is, mm-hmm. it's like family. It is when it's point blank period. So I, I completely see that. I completely accept and receive that. I'm sure the fans do too, Bryce. That's what makes you so awesome. You're an aerospace engineer. Like, people mm-hmm. trip out when they hear that. And I and I guess because I know you, it's like, oh, yes, Bryce does for a living. But th- the ins and outs of being an aerospace engineer, because I have had many conversations with you about my fear of flying, how I think every plane's gonna crash, and you're like, no, Jason, here's how this works. How does one, besides going to school, become an aerospace engineer? Did I just answer that question for you? <laughs> besides going to school? Well, um, so for anyone listening who wants to get on the aerospace engineering industry, uh, generally, yeah, you want a bachelor's degree in some sort of science. So if you're coming out of high school, you know, uh, look on the, the math side and check aerospace engineering on your college applications or <laughs> math, science, whatever. Um, and then when you're in school, it's very important to get involved in a club. So I was a cheerleader in college. So go I team. Didn't, yeah, whew, go team, go. So I made the, well, I won't call it a mistake. I, I love being on, on the cheer team. That was, that was a lot of it's fun. It's fun. It's so much fun. Yeah, but one of the things that meant was I didn't also join an engineering club where you're like designing airplanes or like little Baja cruisers or whatever the thing may be. So if you're in college right now, um, yeah, join a club that's going to help grade on your resume. So when you're going to an interview for a job, you can say, hey, you know, I've taken all these classes, blah, blah, blah. Like everyone's graduating with a degree. You want to be able to look at a club. It's like, hey, look at this thing I built. I, I built this cool little remote control airplane. I did this analysis on the wing. If you can talk about a project, that really helps with your interviews. And then it'll get you into a job at, you know, something like Northrop SpaceX. I worked at Honeywell Aerospace, um, anything like that. So I think the hands-on, you know, activity combined with school, that's like how you merge things. And that'll help propel you into the uh, engineering career. Yeah. yeah. So what, but what, what, so, but what does a normal day of aerospace engineering look like? Because people think, oh, Bryce today is building the next spaceship to Mars or what is, yeah, give us some receipts. We need the receipts. This is what my day looks like. Wow. Okay. And I'm, and, I'm on the phone a lot now. So okay. Now. I was like, are you, what, is that your best Janet Jackson tour impersonation? Like what, what's going on there? No, I, I'm on the phone, phone a lot. So my, my general day is, you know, there's a lot of different roles in, in engineering. Uh, you can be sitting in front of a computer doing analysis, making a 3D model, pretending that there's like hot air flowing over it, looking at temperatures and stresses. You can be on a lab 
putting together ducks and looking at test data, or you can be on the phone with the customer saying, hey, we flew this aircraft um, and this thing happened. What's what's with that thing? And then you're just talking through with the customer, like looking at, you know, do we want to do a software fix to fix this thing? Can we just fly with it anyway? So um, it's, you have to be very flexible um, and have like a good enough like level of engineering knowledge to be able to understand people who are smarter than you. I spend yeah. most of my time now listening to people who are way smarter than me and going, wow, you're an expert in that thing. I'm going to try to distill all this complex stuff into something simple that I can understand. So then I can go explain it to other people like in a like little bite-sized chunk. So I, I actually, yeah, spend most of my day just with my headset on listening to really smart people and trying to learn as much as I can. So Right, right. Um, yeah. Well, it's, beyond beyond you being an aerospace engineer, people also celebrate you because you have like an incredible body. And people always ask me like, like does the pit crew like what do they do to keep in shape? I'm like, I don't know. Go ask Bryce. Bryce has like alien abs and zero body fat, and you look better and better and better and better. <laughs> Bryce, what is your? I mean, what is your fitness routine like? What is your diet like? I'm not, I know you like your junk food, but not but but not but obviously you don't eat enough junk. You don't eat a lot of junk food because you're always you always look incredible. You always stay in shape. What is your fitness routine look like or what did it look like pre-covid and what does it look like now okay so pre-covid uh i had a gym membership which i no longer have um, i used to go to a climbing gym so i think my biggest thing of advice is because i've switched up what i do a lot I, i'll run i'll do power lifting i'll do climbing i'll do biking my biggest piece of advice to somebody is find something that's active and something you actually enjoy mm -hmm. so you can do it because consistency little bits of consistency over time trump any anything so you're not going to be consistent in doing something you love unless you enjoy it so if you find an activity like say you love soccer do that because if you enjoy it you'll do it all the time if you like running like i do do that because you'll do it all the time if you like weightlifting do that like don't get into a workout and go oh my god what a slog like that, that might be fine for a couple times, but you need to enjoy it. Then you'll do it consistently. Mm -hmm. So that's the terms of like working out. Um, then the other thing is diet. So yeah. I know, yeah. so Hard. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Calories in, calories out. If, if I'm gaining weight, I'm eating more calories than I burn. In which case I can do two things, work out more to burn more calories or eat a little less to have fewer calories and then I'll lose fat, ideally. Um, I know there's tons of life stresses and everything like that. That's not always possible. You have to prioritize yourself, your mental health, your everything. So if you're super stressed and you can't, you know, devote the time to like track how much you're eating, or if that's not a priority to you, don't worry about it. You know, as long as you're eating, you know, healthy, you know, plants and, you know, whole yeah. foods and all that stuff, sure. that's, that's ideal. But if you want to go and like, look at your weight, it's, to me, I simplify it calories in calories out mm -hmm. so i you know sometimes i'll go eat mcdonald's or whatever have my chicken nuggets like okay that's that's part of the calories for the day it's not the healthiest choice but uh as long as i'm eating fewer calories than i'm burning then i can lose some body fat and if i when I put on some muscle then i'll eat more calories than i burn in a day and yeah that there, there's no one trick i guess right. is what I'm trying to say. and don't right. beat yourself up over if you're not like oh my god perfect like you gotta, yeah. you gotta be happy. You gotta go out with friends and enjoy a meal together. Like, don't beat yourself up over anything like that. Like, we go out and we go to Bossa Nova and have great times. Bossa Nova. I thought, Bossa, don't even bring up Bossa Nova. Ah, it's been so long. It's been, and, and look, restaurants are open back here in, in Los Angeles, but it's not like the same feel. You know, it's not like you, you feel, you feel like you are in it like a, and I, and rightfully so. I mean, health, the health of the, of the public and public safety is, is of course paramount, but it's not the same experience. You feel like you're just like, okay, let me just sit here and just not look at anyone and just eat my salad and pee. It's, it's, just a, it's a completely different experience now. So yeah, I miss our Bossa Nova days because you know that is my jam mm -hmm. yeah so i think with you know my, my thing with like uh, any like big events in life you like kind of uh use it as like a, a jolt to do something new so like cooking i made some badass zucchini bread yesterday there's a lot of sugar in zucchini bread it's basically just like sugar and then you add a little zucchini and then hey it's bread now it's great um so you know although we're not in restaurants enjoying bossa nova you know, maybe take the time to learn cooking or mm -hmm. 
we're doing more takeout now. Like, so I'm trying new places that I didn't know before. So, you know, about a month ago, I saw a list of, you know, local black owned yeah. uh, restaurants. So now I have new restaurants to go to. I ordered some takeout from a local black owned restaurant and it was great food. I loved it. So now I got, you know, even though we're cooped up, you take the opportunity to go do something new. You can even new restaurants, you know. Boom! There you go. The, 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 I call those I call those COVID server linings. Want to say what's up to everyone in the comments? They're celebrating you, man. They love you. They're like Bryce is so charming. Stress eating. <laughs> um, a question someone had is Bryce, do you encounter people who don't take you seriously because you're a pit crew member? Um, not in my day to day job. No. So most people at my job don't know I'm on pit crew, and if they do, it's just like completely. <laughs> you're moonlighting. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, in real life. I don't want to say real life. Everything's real life. This is real life, Jason. We're making this real life, um, even though we're not in person at Bossa Nova. Uh, I am lucky enough that, no, that doesn't generally happen. Um, you know, the Internet's full of YouTube comment type things. So mm -hmm. there are only YouTube comments where people are just rude for no reason, and you just got to brush that off because for every one comment, there's, you know, 100 positive comments, and that's right. what you got to focus on, right? Um, so... Yeah, actually, I, I think I'm pretty lucky. Um, I I don't get a lot of uh, dismissal for being a underwear model because that generally I, I wear clothes in public. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't really come up. But, you know, online comments are something that I got used to, you know, within the first few months. Is like, oh, but at first I was like, oh, no, people are mean. And then I was like, oh, if I look over here, there's no mean people. So Right. It's just shifting your focus. Um, Heather GTV, who was the host of Last Night's Late Night on Entertainment Weekly, mm -hmm. uh, said hi. And she's like, living a double life. Yes, she's, she, she's awesome. You, we, we all got to go do chips and salsa at Soli Luna, our other spot, um, uh, with Heather, because she's, she's incredible. Let's take some more questions from, from people watching, okay? Because people are like, oh, my gosh. Um, let's see here. Oh, oh my God. Well, here's one. Bryce, from Wall Hud, what was your favorite season of Drag Race to film? Favorite season? I think there's a, there's a tie. So I think for like the guests that we've had on, um, God, was it season, which one had Alex Trebek? Um, um, hold on one second. 10? That was, I think that was season, I'm oh, sorry, I lost you for a minute. Um, I, don't, I don't remember. It may have been season, maybe season 11. They, they all blur together. Yeah, I, I know. It's so hard to pick because they're all... Okay, so the, the season with Alex Trebek, I think that one tied with my first season. Yeah. Because I just love, like, we don't get to see all the guest judges, and that's some of my favorite part is just, like, fangirling over, like, oh, my God, so-and-so's here. So the, the season with Alex Trebek and, like, Kate Upton, and, and that was, like, you know, in terms of being able to interact with the people like Kamel, Nanjiani, um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we met so many cool people because we just, you know, lucked out and we got to overlap with the actual guest judges. I hate going to the set and you're like, so-and-so was here last week? Oh, I know, man, I know. I know, me too. It's, it's like, oh my, you had, uh, really? No one could call me? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost as if yeah, like, it's, it's a, a bummer. It's such a bummer. Really show up and you're like, oh man, I missed so-and-so. Um, so that was my favorite, meeting Camille um, and Emily Gordon and... Uh, yeah, those people. It was that was my favorite. Um, and then my first season because everything was new. I was excited. I met you, Miles, or or pick your brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, that the whole new experience. Um, and that that season we also did a lot more. Like we did dirty charades with RuPaul. There was a lot of interaction with Ru and Michelle, and I think we had a lot of fun my first season. And um, yeah, my first and I guess we'll we'll say it was a season ten. Sure. Yeah, Maybe I remember. Season, I also did drag. Yeah, right. Red hot, 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 hot. Red hot, hot, hot. I mean, hot. oh, it's only two T's. Okay, look, in my world, it just goes on and on. Yeah, so red hot, 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 hot. Uh, let's take another. Let's take another question. Let's see. Boom. Um, dude. Uh, I haven't watched Canada Drag Race yet. I I love Canada. Um, I was oh, supposed to go God. earlier this year, but couldn't because of travel restrictions sadly but happy canada day to everyone on 
July 1st. I love Canadians too. I was supposed to go to Toronto. My, my goal is to go to Toronto or Vancouver. It hasn't happened. It's Toronto, not Toronto. I've had a lot of Canadian friends, but like, Jason, you say it wrong. It's Toronto. Mm -hmm. It's Toronto. Yeah. Not The T is soft, like the soft, like jogging with the soft J. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm sorry. I was watching Anchorman. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Um, if, if you weren't an aerospace engineer, Bryce, and you weren't on Drag Race, uh, what would you be doing? Um, I, you know, when I was growing up, I always thought if, you know, money were no object, I'd love to be just a park ranger. <laughs> like, honestly. Ranger Joe. Just if you're, like, hanging out in nature all day long, that sounds like a fantastic thing to do. Um, however, if money were an object, uh, I would probably do some sort of software engineering type of thing. I feel like um, the problem solving and puzzle and optimization, I think my personality now would work out for a software engineer. Maybe not so much when I was younger, but I just love organizing things. As you can tell, I reorganized my room, got new curtains, and I don't know. So software engineer or park ranger, you know? Park Almost ranger. Similar Fun. job. Fun fact about Bryce, you guys watching. Also, I want to say hi to Luca Lacera, huge fan. Hi, Luca. Um, he, he has a question. We'll get, we're, Luca, we'll get your question in just a second. But Bryce has, like, the best singing voice. And Bryce is, like, tells the best joke. Like, Bryce, you're so freaking funny. And I don't, think, I don't think people know that. I don't think people know that about you because you're very reserved. But once you get behind the velvet rose, rope of Bryce, guys, he's hilarious. Bryce, you, why, don't you, why don't you do a song? Why don't you do a pick who songs? You have, a, you have an incredible voice. I don't even think you know you know you have a good voice. Oh, I, the shower, the uh, shower singing effect. Yeah, I'll just sing a sing a lot when we're just in in the back seat or back studio, just kind of waiting, hanging out in our green room. Uh, you know what? Yeah, Rue did pitch us. You know, saying, "Hey, you should do like a a pit crew show," and we did our like beatboxing thingy with Miles a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let, let's just do a pit, pit crew song. We'll. Uh, yeah. Wait, look, I, we can we can do a single. All we need is just a good one-off, a good single. To, you know, hit, hit up some, show up in some clubs. Auto tune me the house down boots. Yes, God, Mama, because my I, I, the only sharp the only the only notes I ever hit be are sharp and flat, bro. That's it. So don't expect me to have like incredible <laughs> vocals because that's not happening. Uh, let's take one more question. All right, um, three people alive or dead you would invite over for dinner. Uh, so like, over for dinner. Okay. So I'm probably going to do nerdy historical stuff. Um, no, I, I want to pick one person from the present day. So let's do someone like, uh, I don't want to say Elon Musk, because I feel like you hear him enough anyways on Twitter. I don't need to invite him over to talk about. Um, well, Jason Carter, I'll have you over. Well, okay. Present day. So. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You go to Nova. Um, and then historical figure, uh, I would, assuming I would understand their language, it would be cool to see, like, uh, let's go, like, a Viking. I've been watching Vikings a lot, so I'm going to go with Ragnar Lundgren, the, the Viking from Vikings. Um, I just want to understand, like, what they're thinking. They're like, yeah, we're going to sail across and take over England, because, you know, why not? So I would, I would want to talk to a Viking because that'd be crazy. I bet they'd have the most insane stories. They would. And then let's go farther back. Um, let's go with. Um, what, what's your favorite old, old school culture? Like uh, Greek, India, China. Um. <laughs> I would do no. That, that's a good question. I think I like like Genghis Khan, China for sure, because I love. I mean, mm -hmm. I love Crouching Tiger, Hidden Drag. I, anything, anything. Genghis my, Khan. I know. Yeah, or I mean, Genghis Khan, however you pronounce it, or Soft people like who started the dynasty in China. Yeah. Right. So, some, the whole Mongolian history podcast. So we'll, we'll do one of the cons. Um, yeah, we'll do Genghis Khan. Uh, we got Ragnar Lothbrok, the Viking, and then we got Jason. We'll there we go. See, then, and but here's the thing: with those Vikings and Genghis, we're probably eating like something that's like just barely killed and dragged onto the Dude, table that, from outside. Barbecue is so good. It oh is so God. not good. It it's is so good. not good. It's so gross. No, it is not good. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's good for the soul. It's Fine. For Whatever. It's good for it's good for your soul and, and terrible for my stomach. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll leave with that. Be all right, man. Look, it. Um, I know you have you have a busy day, man. Uh, if when people you know when people come up to you, 
and recognize you from Drag Race, well, how, and I know they do because you're you're one, you're you're striking, you you're yeah. unique, and you're you're one of a kind. The feelings you get, like, do you sometimes pinch yourself that you're on this amazing global phenomenon, this iconic show, and you get to be a part of television history? Like, what does that feel like for you? I think it's such like a jump past what I feel reality is that it doesn't click most of the time. Uh, and I feel like when people rec see me, it also doesn't click for them because I'll like sometimes I'm running outside and then someone will be walking the other way. It's like it crew because <laughs> it you know like maybe it's this guy. I'm like yep, <laughs> keep on running. Um, and then yeah, some people are shy. Uh, I'm not going to name the restaurant, but one time I went to a restaurant in Hollywood and they fed me a taco and there was a screw in it. <laughs> Yeah, and like, uh, excuse me, you might want the screw back. It came from something. And they're like, oh no, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, not sorry, there was a screw in your taco, but just please don't tell Rue that there was a screw. Please, please. Don't tell Rue. Yeah, because before that, I had no idea they knew who I was. And then it was only until I, I wanted to just like, you know, jokingly give them the screw back that fell under my taco. <laughs> they're like, oh no. Wow. And then, you know, people were like, uh, you know, if you see me in person, feel free to say hi. I'm not going to say Boop, or anything yeah. like that. Because um, I do get some, like, instant messages, like, after the fact. They'll come in and say, like, hey, were you at such and such place? I thought I saw you. Like, just say hi. I'll say hi back. You know, Love no it. big deal. No big deal. All right, bro, it's Bryce. It has been awesome catching up with you, brother. Um, I hope you you stay safe and you stay, you stay well. And where can people find you online besides where we're at right now on Instagram? Where we're at right now. So I got Bryce Allenberg on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm at Vicarious Bryce. And actually, I did start up a Twitch channel. I haven't like blasted it out because I feel like other voices need to be heard much more than mine right now. But um, I started, it's the same name on twitch.tv, Vicarious Bryce. I just have a link. I just put a link in my Instagram and, and Twitter. But I'll probably just play games and hang out. So if people just want to like hop in and say hi while I'm playing Halo or whatever the heck. Um, yeah, that'd be a cool place to come hang out because I play video games a lot anyways. I figure, hey, might as well stream it and if people want to say hi, they can say hi. So, Boom. Great. Boom, Boom, guys. Go follow Bryce. Bryce, always good to see you, man. I'll talk to you soon. You have a good day and thanks for coming on my show. All right. Thanks. Love you, man. Talk to you Bye, later. Bye. Love you back. Later. Boom.